Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, and today, man, what a show we got for you. Uh, breaking news stuff, AEW Revolution uh, preview, and a whole lot more. Of course, with me as always, my Tully Blanchard to Arn Anderson, the one, the only, Rich, the Hammer Fist Stambolian. Oh, once a horseman, always a horseman. Once a Matt Men, always a Matt Man. I want to be a horseman, not a horseman. Like a like a minotaur, like like a yes, like a centaur. <laughs> a I'm sorry, like a centaur. I want to be but a centaur. Top half horse or bottom half horse? Oh no, top half horse. Like horse. So, <laughs> I want to be BoJack Horseman. So a horse head, man body. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Uh, before we begin today's show, and man, a, a lot, a lot is happening. I broke the internet. I broke the pro wrestling world. <laughs> I broke the internet. I broke a lot of viewers. I yeah. broke a lot of followers, so I want to I want to talk about this in detail now that I finally can, uh, uh, which I want to thank a bunch of people to help me put the story <laughs> together. I want to give credit where credit is due. But before we continue, guys, if you enjoy the show, if this is the first time you're tuning in, hey, listen, we do a pro wrestling show. It's a little different than most. We try to have fun with pro wrestling. We talk about the things that we love. Rich and I are twenty something year out year long friends. Uh, we've been watching wrestling our entire lives, so we we genuinely love the sport. We love the product, and we talk about pro wrestling uh, because we love to, and we love we love everything about it. We love the community. We love the the the, the tweets from you guys. Uh, so it's been amazing to be able to do this for the last ten years. Uh, if you if you're new to the show, buckle up. It's a lot of fun, especially our watch alongs, which we're going to talk about what we're doing this weekend. For our AEW Revolution watch along exclusively on the Wrestling Observer website and, of course, F4W's YouTube page. So we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. Uh, so we're going to go into NXT and everything, obviously. But I, I kind of want to stay focused today because there's so much to break down through the week. But before we go on, uh, sad news to start the show. Jim Crockett Jr. passed away at 76 years old. He was in hospice care uh, for kidney and liver issues. And uh, he personally requested to be taken off dialysis. I, I, I think he realized the difficulty he was facing and there really wasn't m much more they could have done. And uh, he passed away in hospice care yesterday while AEW was going on. Right, Rich? Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, very unfortunate. Uh, rest in peace. Um, but what an interesting night to go out, especially with what happened on the show. Yeah, a lot went on. Listen, I, I think a lot of people forget how instrumental Jim Crockett Jr. was to professional mm -hmm. wrestling. Obviously, he took over his father's company, Jim Crockett Promotions, uh, which they did a whole lot more than pro wrestling. If, if you're from the, the mid-Atlantic area, like North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, going into Virginia, I, I mean, Jim Crockett ran tremendous shows of the concerts. Uh, a lot of people that I know that, came, that are in the music business that are a little older, uh, one of my friends, Mike Phillips, he came from the record industry in North Carolina, and he knew Jim Crockett as a music venue promoter and not so much a pro wrestling promoter. So there's a tremendous legacy there. Um, if I would, I would really recommend fans, newer fans, go and read up on Jim Crockett and, and see how this whole thing came up because he was the number one promoter in the world at one point, North America for sure at one point, point. Uh, and the demise of Crockett uh, promotions really was rapid and a lot of it had to do with bad accounting bad bookkeeping yeah. uh purchasing you know uh, mid-south did not help because they put them in tremendous amount of debt and before they knew it they were gone and turner had to come and and, and pick them up and that that was the beginning of wcw but like rich said tonight was a great homage to that era of pro wrestling and uh something we will probably not see again uh, which is which is pretty cool that we we got to witness this last night and, and of course you know, he passed away on, on the same night. So a lot a lot of thought went into last night's show. We'll talk about that, obviously. Uh, Rich, Raw, yes, sir. you want to go straight into this? Let's go. It happened. All right. It happened. Oh, my God. Finally, the thing that we've been talking about for a billion million years, they finally put that strap on Robert Lashley. Robert Lashley. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, know, you know, I was waiting for the train yesterday. I was going into Manhattan uh -huh. uh, and... I got to tell you, <laughs> uh, I, I envision Bobby Lashley not being a human being, and he's from a it, different planet. Ooh. Okay, right? yes, yes, yes. Lashley is an alien. He's rock, not, he's the not rock from planet. the He is from a rock planet, and men, women, they all look like him. All hairless. Okay. You sure. cannot tell the difference if it's a man or a woman. 
Go they're for it. all they all look like Bobby Lashley, and they're uh-huh. all about four hundred to five hundred years old. That's the that's the that's the age span of that entire planet. But they all look oh. like Lashley. You know, I feel like you could easily work. They're doing like a He Man and the Masters of the Universe reboot. I feel like you could easily put Bobby Lashley into that cartoon and nobody would bat an F and I dude. Cause there were, for, there were rock people on that cartoon. I don't know if you remember that. There were rock. I remember the rock people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, just such an impressive, forget, let's talk about, we'll, we'll break this down, but my God, what an impressive looking guy. Right. And oh, yeah. when you look at this guy, if you're a casual fan, you're going to be like, Oh yeah, that's a world champion. I got that. Look mm-hmm. at him. His, he's an Adonis. Impossible body type to achieve yeah, for, for a viewer for a fan yes, right yes. like that's i shouldn't say a viewer i mean like there's plenty of people who are like big jacked and ripped but i think you know we talk about this on the show sometimes where you look at certain guys on the roster and you're like yeah this dude looks insane that's like an insane andrew how long do you think it would take for you to get as jacked as bobby lashley uh as ja- like are we talking like as jack for my frame or just get obscene like him as 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 big as your body can handle, and you're already like a fit dude, I feel like it would take at least seven years to get. <laughs> to the, you know, I was gonna say it would take me probably six to eight months. Okay, I want to see this. I want to see like, this but like, transformation. But but and a, but I don't pos- I don't possess the the dedication to ever be able to do that. You know That's what I mean? What I'm like, saying. Yeah, it, it's it's such it takes such a unique person to be able to do that. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's it, it, he's I mean, he's I mean, just unbelievably impressive to look at. So this was interesting how they did this. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the story of Raw pretty much was that Miz was trying to duck out of the championship match. Right. First with diarrhea. <laughs> first, he had he had the poo poos. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, so he they didn't do it. And then finally, at the end of the show, by the way, ratings held up for Raw. Ratings were not bad. Whatever they attempted worked. The hourly drop was not as significant as it is most weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, people stayed and watched. Teen girls were really into it for some reason. They didn't have the normal drop off of teen girls. Uh, it did very well amongst 30 to 40 year olds as far as the ratings went for that show. Okay. So listen, I like The Miz. I, I got to tell you, I... I, I think this is a st- the Miz is going to be a story of the impossible. Yes. And there is a tremendous amount of casual viewers that absolutely adore the Miz and they love everything about the Miz. Right? 100%. A- and I see that and I saw that with the reaction from people, my friends that are just casual wrestling fans. You know, they'll watch mm-hmm. Raw every now and then, they'll watch AEW every now and then, and they watch pay per views, you know, but they're not, they're not reading about this stuff. They all love him. So, yeah, it, it, it was something interesting to see very short term. I'd love to see him actually hang on to the title and really do a program. But the purpose of this was to get the title uh, to a transition champion to put it on Lashley. They dragged this out all night. Uh, Shane McMahon is all involved in this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it was a squash match at the end. Let me let me ask you something. When Shane comes out, do you pop for here comes the money? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I still do. I'm still into Shane coming out. It's it's weird, right? Isn't it like so far into the future in 2021? You hear that that dopey music, and you're like, "Ooh, <laughs> this is gonna be." It 100 percent is dopey music. It's mm-hmm. 2021. You're still hearing that, but there's a couple of those moments. Like we got that last night, man. I, I was I was a kid yeah. again. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, the nostalgia God. thing. And listen, uh, you want to say I'm biased? Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm a little biased because I enjoyed it a lot because it reminded me of my childhood. You know, seeing Tully Blanchard coming out there and Russell, which we'll go into. Very interesting. But I got to tell you, I'm loving what they're doing with Lashley. I'm not. Yeah. I, there's, I have no complaints on that. I think right now, I think this is the first time in a long time that WWE has put both uh, championships in a very interesting situation, right? Oh, 100 percent, dude. Like you we we've talked on this show at length about how. You know what, Drew should keep that title on him for like the next like two years or whatever, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Nope, it's the Miz." Oh, by the way, gotcha. It's Bobby Lashley. Yeah. So you know, you were saying this kind of opens it up for a lot more people on the roster, and it's been a very long time since we had that. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, we, Rich and I were, what he's talking about is that Rich and I were talking about gatekeeping. Yes. And, you know, he's right. You're absolutely right. We are right now in an era where you don't have a gatekeeping champion. I guess the closest is Roman, but he's the guy. Right. Um, but I, I, you know, like the term, the gatekeeping champion thing is kind of interesting because it's not, I feel like you could have used that term maybe with like a Hogan or a Cena, right? Hogan, like, Cena, Bruno, you know, Tri- like Hunter. Oh, like I'm not doing the honors for this guy or whatever, or whatever speculative backstage nonsense that we think happened, right? But at this point in WWE, I really feel like the control is censure is is centrally with the office, right? So if they want to keep that belt on Brock, it's not Brock saying, "Hey, I'm not dropping it to so and so." Yes, it's the yeah. office saying, "You are going to hold on to this until blah 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 blah. This happens in the future, and then you drop it at this big moment." Um. This also, this whole thing with Bobby Lashley and The Miz and Drew McIntyre kind of makes me feel like the exact same thing they would do with the world title when they had the big gold belt on one show and then, you know, the WWE championship. So that's kind of cool that they're kind of bringing that. But they've always had to focus on one title, right? Isn't that? Oh, yeah. Hasn't that? That's always been the problem, right? That uh, the focus is always on one title and the other one is always like the secondary where it doesn't matter. It could flip-flop from brand to brand. Sometimes a world champion or sometimes a universal championship is the main one. But mm-hmm. uh, like even with Drew holding the title, they made it seem important. And yeah. even on the other side, with Roman having a title, obviously you know it's important because Roman has it. So right. <laughs> you want to talk about the positivity for WWE, they've done a good job at, at sh- telling you, you know, these two titles are the, the titles. It doesn't matter who holds it. These are the belts. Drew was the, you know, Drew became the king. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he beat L- Lesnar, but now for Lashley, I mean, that main event picture for that WWE title, a lot of big dudes, a lot yeah. of big names, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are involved in this. You know, you mm-hmm. have, uh, you know, think about the main event positioning right now in WWE. You got yeah. Lashley, you got Drew, you got Roman, and you have Edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Miz is up there, obviously, because he just had the championship. Sheamus right. is kind of there. Randy Orton's still in the mix. Randy Orton will always be in the mix until this dude retires. By the way, so uh, he vomited. He started. He, you didn't see him vomit black goo this time on Raw, but you did see him mm-hmm. vomit. And there's an evil Randy Orton. <laughs> I told you it's gonna happen, dude. There, there yeah. I, 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 I'm. I cannot wait for NWO uh, Cena to show up. And the more if, you say it, the yeah. more it's going to come true. The more it's going to come true. I'm, t- I'm telling you, they're going to be stuck. He's going to rescue Cena from the void. Uh, and then they're going to they're going to be like the ultimate tag team in WWE. Have we ever seen uh, Randy Orton and John Cena as a tag team and po- and like win the belts? I, you know, I got to tell you, I, I'm positive they've tag teamed. I don't know if they've mm-hmm. held the belts together, but that was an era that I was I, I really my memory is totally whacked out from that from that. Same era. here. Same here, because I feel like if they didn't, it was a missed opportunity because I always think of like those oddball tag teams like Austin, Shawn Michaels, Austin yeah. Dude Love, you know, where like these the, the bitter enemies got the tag belts. Also, you know what it was? I, I think the reason why I'm so disconnected is that that ECW relaunch was such a botch. <laughs> they screwed that up so badly where I really it really affected me as a wrestling fan. I was like, I kind of want to back off for a little bit. It was just so disappointing. And as a person, I want to back off. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about NXT and how I broke the internet uh, <laughs> a couple days ago. Oh, my God. So dude. I didn't think it was going to blow up like that. I kind of knew, but I didn't yeah. think because I so let's go back on, on the calendar because I spoke to um, a few people to put this t- together. So back Can- in February. Yes, I want to say around Last week. Febu- well <laughs> well no i we fir- i first got wind around the week of february 8th that this was happening uh um, right and and i think i told you and i th- i think i told mg geek and jonathan in the chat i'm like hey i'm really hearing rumblings again about nxt moving to tuesday uh mm-hmm. i i had been asking for months and every time i was told but the way i asked was hey what do they think of the ratings you know and the response was same for response that i get for raw Whenever I ask about raw ratings, oh, we're really, you know, we're happy to be partners with them. Everything is good. There's no problems here. No, no, uh, no pressure from either side. We get what WWE is doing. It's a rebuilding time. 
and it's COVID era, so you really you're limited with what you're doing, and uh, they were fine with it, right? Right. So when the NBC announcement came that they were shutting down their sports network, mm-hmm. um, that's when all the conversation started. So if anybody could, uh, MJ Geek, if you could tell me what date that was, because I had specifically asked about Wednesday hockey, and this time the answer that I got was everything is on the table at the moment. Right, mm-hmm. nothing is off the table. Everything is on the table. Not saying that they're going to move, but the conversation's happening. Right, right. Um. So last week, I got a hundred percent confirmation that this was happening, and I tweeted right. something like, "Changing days in April bring higher ratings in May," or something like that. Right, kind of teasing it a little bit, but I don't yeah, want to yeah. because very coy. I, I couldn't confirm this. Uh, right. I'm sorry, January 22nd, I, I was told that this would happen originally, okay? So we're going back two months. Um, so last week, I alluded to that. I, I sent a message to a couple people that you guys are very aware of, and they had, mm-hmm. you know, they had said, well, you know, we've heard the same things, but nothing really, nothing really. But the, <laughs> I, I, the source to this story is not from a wrestling side of things, right? Like right. the person that told me this doesn't give two shits about pro wrestling. He's, uh, you know, there's two people that I spoke to at NBC. One is from the programming side and somebody from sales uh, that it's going to be almost impossible for anybody. I, I actually, Justin Robert Young asked me, he's mm-hmm. like, he's like, he didn't ask me who the source is, but he's like, you think you're, you're supposed to get so much pressure. My response was, I, it would be impossible for them to know who it is. Right. That's right. how disconnected of of a person this is from pro wrestling. Has yeah. no, so, um, so you know, he I messaged this person, and mm. this person said, "Hey, you want to go ahead? Go ahead and say it, because it's now all over the company. You know, everybody knows now in the company internally." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Great. like, "Hey, you know what? F it." So I posted it, and it blew up. <laughs> You uh, hit that launch button, man. That yeah, it was like the nuclear yeah. launch codes. And also, like, I kind of want to, I, I want to like reiterate a little bit of something that what you just said. I feel like, unfortunately, a lot of wrestling fans think that all of pro wrestling is um, controlled by pro wrestlers slash uh, dirt sheet people. It's not. There's business people who don't give an f. But I will tell you this: wrestling, though. they like okay. money. Yeah. They love money. Uh, so. I will say that the the online conversation around NXT moving, oh boy, yeah. assisted to them making that decision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me just put it that way. I'm not saying a specific dirt sheet or whatever was the cause, but the things that people write do impact decision making. And I think mm-hmm. this was a perfect storm for hockey to go on USA on Wednesdays. And Mm -hmm. for USA to use this as a moment to move NXT to a Tuesday night. So uh, a couple things here. First of all, this is not a negative. And I saw so many people. Oh, "Oh, Vince waving the white flag. We got to stop that nonsense. Listen, this is a business. (laughs) It's not. This is business. It has nothing to do with quitting. This is the best business decision that they could possibly make. Why would Absolutely. you why would you hemorrhage viewership? Why would you split your viewership? Why would you take a quarter of your viewership and compete on the same night when it, that is no longer necessary? And I'm not saying that WWE had to move the show. What I'm saying is this is the smartest move that this company could have made because based on internet trends, based on the ratings, you could see there's mm-hmm. less interest in NXT and less conversation is happening around NXT than it did two years ago. It just, Absolutely. It, it's, it's, and that, that, that says nothing. I mean, listen, the product is phenomenal. I love watching yep. NXT and I think it's a great yep. show, but if they need to move to Tuesday to, and, and get around 800 to 900,000 viewers, how is that a bad thing? It's not. And you know what? I think the people who poo poo on this decision, um, are a little removed from reality in the regard of like, listen, you have NXT on. You're gonna have NXT on Tuesdays. That's awesome, right? You're gonna yeah. have AEW on Wednesdays. That's awesome. The invisible war between NXT and AEW on Wednesday nights is just that. It was a non-existent Wednesday night war. Listen, you dude, know, there it was, was it was a nuisance. It really. I, yeah. I'm gonna say it. 
people are like, oh, I like channel flipping. No, you don't. I don't. I want to watch both yeah, shows. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want. And I hate that I miss certain things and I got to go back to watch certain things. It, it's unnecessary. And, and you're only hurting yourself by being a defensive measure. And listen, that was the whole purpose of NXT going up against AEW was a defensive measure. It was a defensive measure right. to prevent them from hitting the ratings to mm. to get uh to get a better TV deal, which you know they got a they got tens of millions of dollars from yeah, this oh, TV absolutely. deal, estimated to be anywhere from forty five million to about eighty million. So you know that that's 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 a great thing for for AEW, but WWE is getting paid for this show. They're selling ads for this <laughs> show. USA USA is dedicated to NXT. So absolutely, th- you know that you gotta do you gotta do your best and. It didn't it, it, having it on the same night. Not saying that they were losing. That I mean, you're talking about a couple hundred thousand people. You're not talking about millions being blown away by millions of people. Why would you want to split the audience? Go. On. It's great that they're going on a Tuesday night. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and not only that, but listen, WWE in a certain regard will never lose. You know, you can complain about the product and the booking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a good example of like, listen, they're gonna do better numbers their show that was already solid is gonna stay the course you know yeah uh, i think the thing that would have made it more of a quote-unquote war would have been if both shows counter programmed and really had it in for each other like wcw and monday night raw which didn't happen you know like tony khan's doing his own thing with AEW, and he stood the course nxt was doing its own thing with hunter and their roster and they stood the course yeah. this is this is i feel like a generous shift for wrestling fans you know i hate channel flipping too uh i have to like scramble to watch nxt on thursday morning before we do the show yeah me too me too Uh, i i gotta i gotta pick one for the moment and i and i try to flip-flop when i do it but generally i tend to watch AEW live it's it's a you know so this is all positive now what does this mean for nxt um there will be programming changes, obviously. I think we're going to start seeing a little bit of those. I'm not going to go into detail mm-hmm. what they're changing up about the show, but there will be some changes to the feel of the show. Um, I I also have another NXT story, which okay. uh, it has to do with a TakeOver pay-per-view, right? Okay. Uh, there's a TakeOver pay-per-view set for the week of WrestleMania. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to say this. Um, The date that WWE put out was the 8th Mm -hmm. for this, which is a Thursday. Right. I don't know if that's accurate or not, because what I'm hearing is that Wednesday show may be the takeover. Interesting. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Both make sense. All right. I I, I, I'm just putting it out. there. I don't know. I'm it's I got to confirm that. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. But listen, big story, everybody. And, and thank you to everybody that, that helped, you know, uh, push the story out. I know a lot of people credited me. I'm actually I'll be on Wrestling Observer Live today at 330 to talk about the story. And of course, to talk about our AEW Revolution watch along that we're going to be doing this Sunday, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. Rich is going to be in studio and also our buddy Kyle Deathmatch expert. He's been in death matches. Yes. Who better to have in here as some w- be with someone that has had a death match? Skewer is stuck in his freaking head. Kyle is gonna strap C four to his chest and jump on you in the middle of oh, the watch along. Can we? Are we gonna get a Enchante versus Kyle death match in the in the in the studio? What was Kyle's wrestling name? Was it K Train? Nate Bateman. Oh, the Nate Bateman, yeah. Yeah, Nate Bateman. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for that watch along. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's always great seeing Kyle, and uh, I'm looking forward to being in the studio with you once again. I hey, also by the way, you, yeah. I'll, you could come in all you want. I'll be vaccinated by then. Beautiful. I uh, I gave you my parameters. If a certain if a certain thing happens, I will do oh, a yeah. backflip out your window onto, onto, onto a snowmobile. <laughs> onto, okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, Rich, you want to go through NXT TV highlights before we go into AEW? Yes, sir. All right. So NXT, again, solid show. Um, you had your opening match with uh, Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch beating um, Timmy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa, which I'm a big fan of this tag team. And as I was watching it yesterday, I was like, oh, this could be the WWE version of the Golden Lovers. 
all right, you know, I got <laughs> uh, can we I gotta tell you something? Uh Tomasa Champa, right? He's uh-huh. younger than me. Yes, and I looked had to look that up too. I, I wanna let you guys know he's two years younger than me. Mm. I, I, he is looking and I'm not I'm not saying this in a bad way, right? No, he's no. looking like a deranged old man. Yeah. He's uh what is he like early thirties, right? Or thirty five. Yeah. So like he looks like uh 1985's version of what a 35 year old looks like. Yes. <laughs> I dude, I'm like holy moly, he like he's letting his hair grow in obviously, and that's that's what it is. So he it's all yeah. it's all gray, salt and pepper. Uh he's like a gnarly man. Uh, I'm digging it. I like the horseshoe. I like the uh, the salt and pepper. Uh that was a fun match. Nice hard hitting. They really put on a, you know, like I feel like when we talk about AEW, uh, this is gonna get like lost in the shuffle. But really strong match, and then you had um, Roddy coming out, cutting a promo on uh, Adam Cole. Uh, I have a question for you, really quick. Yes, I think I may have asked you this already. Is Roddy the modern day Dean Malenko? Yes, I okay. I, I think that every time he comes out, right, like same body type, very athletic. Um, maybe not the best on the mic, but like really a stalwart wrestler for that brand. Yeah, very, very solid dude, man. I've never seen a bad match from him. Uh, so Finn comes out. He calls out Adam Cole. Um, they, I feel like they're really, they're really juicing Finn on NXT because this dude has been all over the place, like defending that belt, right? Finn Balor, man. He, he's. I mean, think about, think about, but. They've built so many people to be a contender for that. Yeah. Like right now, um, all the Undisputed Era. Uh, you also have uh, Killer Cross, Carrying Cross, right. mm-hmm. and you have uh, Pete Dunne. Yeah. And I feel like there's going to be like more people in the woodwork. Eli Drake at some point. Um, Eli, yeah. So you mentioned yesterday on Twitter that you never want to see Finn leave NXT. No, I don't. Tell me why he's he's elevated so many people i I think having balor there it was think about what they did right they took balor came and that whole undisputed storyline took took the position Mm -hmm. of champa and gargano which i think was needed to to move them down a little bit but champa's been Mm -hmm. really elevating timothy thatcher he's being used in a really uh instrumental way to get this guy over as a main event guy and i think it's working uh i believe that was the plan originally with matt riddle but they decided to move Mm -hmm. matt riddle up I don't think that program was supposed to end that quickly. Okay. Uh, and Ciampa's, you know, and Ciampa's doing this whole thing to get Austin Aries, uh, Austin, Austin Aries, Austin Theory over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that that's the purpose of that. So, you know, I, I it's very strategic and really smart how they move people. But, man, this guy, he cannot have these matches on the main roster. Oh, 100%. Like, they, he's able to do stuff that they don't do on TV. Who's he going to feud with on the main roster? It's going to be him and Ricochet in three-minute matches. Or AJ Styles. Or AJ, you know, like, I, I think he's fine there. He He's such a good established guy to put there. Yeah. And I have no problem them moving a couple more people, putting him there. What happens? Why not move Samoa Joe there? I want to see that happen, dude. I really do miss watching Samoa Joe wrestle. Yeah, I and he has yet. How long has he been out already? It's been months. It's, I think it has been close to a year. I want to say he came back early 2020 got an undisclosed concussion on the and set then, of a commercial and then he got suspended did he get suspended yeah. i don't even remember he had okay. a 30-day suspension all right um i feel like we got to keep it a little tight so we don't get yelled go. at mr gonzo yes. for going over 90 minutes <laughs> so we also had the way uh having a therapy session which was the intermittent clips during i didn't the show. care for that i didn't care for that i'm on the same page as you also okay. didn't care for it i love everybody involved didn't care for it. Yeah. Um, you had uh, the return of Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax to NXT to defeat Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, but there was like a snafu on who tapped out. It wasn't the legal person. Uh, you had Adam Pierce um, showing up also. So this is, I feel like this is kind of leading into some kind of mania or mania takeover program, right? It looks like it. Um, yeah. It looks like it. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't think. Dakota Kai and, and, and Gonzalez are going to get the tag titles, but why not? I have a uh, I have a pointed question for you. Shoot. Do you think WWE took 
a page at a New Japan's book with regard to the women's hairstyles, where they'll make them work and work and work and work until they get good enough that they can come out with like an awesome haircut. Uh, they love that stuff, man. Everybody has some mm-hmm. wacky, wacky style, which works. Uh, yeah. I think so. I think that's a little bit of, but you know, a lot of the women worked in these, in these places. That is true. But I, my, the two things that popped in my head was, uh, remember when like Taichi went away for a while Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he came back as like the Phantom of the Opera with like hate, yeah. the blonde hair. Uh, I feel like they did that with Dakota Kai where it's like, she was one way for a very long time. And then she kind of had her thing, went away, came back as a heel. And now her hair is like pink and glamorous. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. That's fine. You are cool. I am cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little yeah, warm no. right now. I have to turn my air conditioner on. Uh, I thought you were going to turn it off. Um, Eli Drake comes out as LA Knight. Um, I feel like we're still going to be calling him Eli Drake for at least another month. <sighs> LA Knight is, is fine. It, it I don't dislike the name, but I also mm-hmm. don't love it, which is whatever. He cut, you know, he cut an Eli Drake style promo. Uh, I think it was a little too long. Like, Okay. If I'm going to nitpick it, I would say it was like a minute too long, the promo. And then here comes Bronson Reed right after. I love that dude. Yeah, he's a he's. I did you watch the match? Did you see the actual match with him and Cameron Grimes? Yeah, yeah. I, listen, I'm, I'm, I've been high on Bronson Reed. Uh, I'm really, really digging this new tweak on Cameron Grimes. I would love Cameron. What did I call him? I didn't call him Cameron. What did I just call him? You called him Cameron Grimes. Did I? Okay. Yeah. I want him to show up at Elon Musk's house and thinking that's his brother-in-law. Oh, that would be amazing. Because Elon uh, had had a kid with Grimes, the yes. electronic <laughs> musician. Yes. Right? So I want him to like be like, hey, Elon, let me in and like start driving around in Tesla because he thinks they're related. Uh, I would love that. I like the chemistry between Grimes and Regal backstage as well. Yeah, man. I, I'm enjoying that a lot. Uh, again, LA Knight promo, which was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who he's going to feud with. Who do you think he's going up against? You honestly, like that roster is so deep right now that you can put him with anybody, and it's it'll be good. You know, like that, like that, like NXT has like a really insanely talented, like working man's roster right now. You know, um, Swerve, Swerve did that promo also, mm-hmm. and I feel like he's gonna inject himself into something. So I wouldn't mind seeing that. Very nice. Uh, what uh, else, what we else did we had? Uh, we we did uh, Legado de Fantasma, Santos Escobar. They're murdering jobbers. Uh, I think he's, as far as Santos Escobar goes, I think he's exactly what WWE wants out of like a uh, Latino superstar mm-hmm. where he brings the legacy, but also he's starting to speak English very well. I mean, like you're a you, Latino superstar. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> but I was born here. Yeah, you know he he's he was huge in Mexico, and I like I think they I think they want that crossover. You know they wanted it with Andrade, they wanted it with Angel Garza. I think they're finally getting it with Santos Escobar. Yeah, they definitely are. Uh, I I like that they're taking their time with him and they're not really mm-hmm. having him uh, come up. You know, and they're beating up jobbers essentially, yeah, preliminary guys, which is cool. His English is getting way better too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the main event, uh, Finn beat Roddy Strong in a super hard hitting, great, great match. You know, like you said, Finn, Finn cannot, I guess, because of booking or whatever time, these are the matches that you kind of want to see Finn have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is, this is, I, I don't want to see him have any other match other than this. You know, like right, him and right. Roddy, him and Kyle, him and Adam, like those are the style matches. And, and and you get that in NXT. You know, they give mm-hmm. them time. They have a really hard-hitting wrestling match, and people love it. Uh, and they announced Adam Cole versus Finn Balor, uh, I think, for next week, right? For next week for the NXT title. Also, they set up a lot of other matches. Next week's show is a big mm-hmm. show. You got Io Shirai yeah. versus Tony Storm for the women's title. Adam Cole mm-hmm. versus Finn Balor for the NXT title. Uh, Zia Lee versus uh, Caden Carter. William Regal will make a huge announcement regarding the finish of the women's tag title match that'll mm-hmm. change NXT forever, he said. Okay. So what the hell does that mean? That's a good question. That maybe that those belts could be defended like all over the place. I think they should. I I I you know what? I would much rather have them do that where the where the women's mm-hmm. title gets 
get you could defend it within all WWE Universe matches, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The other thing I don't want to see is them announce a women's tag title for NXT. Yeah, I the roster is like too thin, but I would like to see that title defended on every brand. And they could the, do it, you know. Hey, also, we got to also remember there is a secondary NXT show that's going to start soon, right? On the WWE Network on, on mm-hmm. Peacock. So it's going to be called NXT Evolve, which I love because, you know, we, we Rich and I were big Evolve fans. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they'll still run Laboom and run the Northeast Territory. <laughs> I... I yeah, they definitely will. I think because isn't will. it like sixty percent evolves roster or seventy five percent all of evolves roster? It's most of. The, I feel like that that twenty that twenty seventeen twenty eighteen roster is yeah eighty percent is evolved dudes you know or guys who have worked in evolve a, apart from EC three who yeah. is in, in Ring of Honor right now EC three who, who signed yeah. a recent deal and EC three worked in evolve too which is pretty cool. So uh, um, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that announcement is. I'm sure we'll find out what it is. Uh, but uh, we'll go from there. Couple housekeeping stuff. AEW Revolution Watch Along, 6:30 p.m. exclusively on Wrestling Observer on the F4W YouTube page. We'll be mm-hmm. there. Maybe we'll simulcast it on their on on. Some, we, you know what the problem is? We have so much going on that day, and they got so much going on that, that day. So we got it. It's almost like real TV. Where we gotta yeah. like have like tight ins and outs. So I like to be on the YouTube channel so we could take our time a little bit. Sure. Go in. Uh you could also join our Discord. We're gonna be giving away prizes. Another four uh observer one month subscriptions. We're gonna be giving those away. Guys, if you have not gotten your subscription, please remind me it's to send another reminder. My I'm I'm going through the emails. I can't find everybody anymore for some reason. It's on me. Please remind me, and I will send. Uh, I will follow up on this. Also, follow our TikTok. That's on TikTok. Search for oh, yeah. Matt Men Pro Wrestling. We're blowing up on TikTok right now. So oh, yeah. um, join our so TikTok. Many views. Follow our TikTok. So many views on TikTok. It's nuts. And uh, so before we continue, dude, can we talk about Big Cass for a second before we get into AEW? He Holy looked like geez. a million bucks, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. A Bayside um, boy, another one of ours. He's a Malloy boy. He's a, he is a yeah. You're a Malloy boy. I'm a Holy Cross boy. Oh, you're oh, you're rival. You guys would beat each other up, right? Uh, it was usually the the St. Francis prep people. You but, guys would beat up the prep kids, or they'd come and try to beat us up. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, but. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking good, man. So you had uh, MG Geek's favorite wrestler on the planet, Enzo, in a match uh, for uh, I think it was uh, Lariato Pro for uh, it was Doc Gallows' promotion. Yeah, in Georgia. Doc Gallows. Yeah, and then boom, Kaz XL shows up. Big Cass, looking like you said, like a million bucks. He looks good, man. I I hope the best for this guy because he is a gigantic dude, very talented. Uh, I I really hope he's got his. This is this is it. He's ready. He's going now. Listen, man, him showing up on Impact, him and Cass on Impact, because remember, there was an Impact banner. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. sponsored by Impact. So there might be something there. Let's wait and see. Let's see I what think, happens here. I think those guys would be perfect on Impact to, to quote unquote, pop the territory. Yeah. And uh, I do think I, I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I feel like we're going to gloss over it. I feel like Miro should have signed with Impact. Uh, Wait and see what happens. Oh, you got some Miro dirt? Let's see. Let's see what happens. All right. All right. All right. You want to go into Dynamite? Let's go into Dynamite, baby. Man, listen. I got a boner for wrestling right now. <laughs> oh, dude, I got to tell you. I can, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Please. I need please, to rewatch please. Dynamite, and I'm going to be oh full God. transparency with the audience, right? With the Hell viewers. Yes. Let's go. Uh, I hey. came home. I got home mm-hmm. around 7.30 last night. Yeah. I had a glass of wine. I took my shower. Uh-huh. I poured a glass of wine, and I, and I took a very delicious caramel. Okay. Mm, Yeah. All right. You know which caramel I'm talking about. Oh, I do. I I was feeling good yesterday, especially during Dynamite. At one point, I envisioned myself. I manifested back to 1997 in my bedroom with my small 23-inch Hitachi TV. Oh, yeah. Channel flipping from TNT to USA. Turn on TNT. What do I see? 
Shaquille O'Neal's there. Tony Schiavone is there. <laughs> the, the Giant is there. Tully Blanchard, Sting. Arn Anderson, Sting, and of course, J.J. Dillon. My I God. don't know what era I was in. I was bouncing back and forth from 1987 mm -hmm. to 1997 to 2021 in My one God. shot. Right? It was really cool. I got it. I, I I really enjoyed it. Now maybe watching it today, I'm not going to find it as cool as I did yesterday. But I don't care. Uh -huh. I kind of don't even want to watch it again because I had such a great experience watching this and chatting with everybody. And this goes yeah. for NXT too. It wasn't just AEW. NXT also yeah. was a great show, and it, I really I watched as a fan, and I absolutely loved it. So now, Rich, let's go into the show. Oh, brother! Listen, man, I agree with you a hundred thousand percent. Did that Hitachi TV have uh have the VCR combo? Because I rocked that nineteen inch Panasonic. I got to tell you, I was bougie. Little VCR combo, yeah. I was bougie. <laughs> I I never did the combo VCR TVs. Uh -huh. This was a very nice Hitachi. My father was a big Hitachi fan. Okay, yeah, loved They're Hitachi. They're great. They're great. Only bought Japanese TVs. Everything Smart. he bought was Japanese. Clothing Japanese. Wow. Towels Japanese. Sure. Loved everything Japanese. So food Japanese. Food Japanese. All we did was eat sushi when I was a Cars, kid. Cars Japanese. Japanese. Wrestling, so Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> you know what? I honestly think my, I'm, I'm kind of joking, but my father was like a big Japanese car guy. Like he loved Japanese sure. car. Um, yeah, he he was like a, he was like a like a racer, like a street racer. He was a street racer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim Anger. Tim Anger said he sent twenty bucks, but not showing up. I don't see it. But thank you, my friend. Thanks, Tim. Much yeah. appreciated. Always appreciate the twenty bucks. All right, let's uh, let's talk about yeah. this 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 gnarly raging hard on that everybody every single person on the planet had during AW. I feel like I couldn't keep up with the text between you and I. The group text, um, Tex and Kyle were all like going crazy about this. You had the show open up with Jade Cargill and Shaq as a tag team versus Cody and Red Velvet. All right, so. I had very low expectation going into this match. Cody's hurt. He has a he has a shoulder injury. A lot of people mm. were speculating that maybe they might pull him from this. Um, they didn't, and and there was a reason for it. And I think they did a great job. This match uh, definitely exceeded what I expected from it. Uh, Cody is super talented. Shaq did. I mean, they booked him <laughs> like Andre essentially. You know, he was he no sold so everything. He no so sold good. everything. Big chops. Uh, yeah. I had zero expectation for Shaq to do anything, but he looked really good. He didn't look great. He looked really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. We got Shaq and Cody through a freaking table, right? They oh were they were wiped out, and the and the girls did everything in this match. So good. Listen, I'm uh, I'll be the first to tell you I am in love with Jade Cargo. She Something very unique like about her. Talk talk about looking like a million bucks. I feel like she looks like a bazillion bucks. There is something very special about her, and I'm so shocked that WWE passed on her. Um, fitness icon, mom. She looks like two American gladiators <laughs> put together. Uh, but every, every who, who Jay bit, Cargill? Yeah, she Jay does Cargill. look like two American gladiators <laughs> fused together. Yeah, the like, even my even uh, my wife was popping because like th those classic heel moves really work. Like her looking at the camera and counting her abs. Um, Red Velvet looked awesome. Cody is, listen, man, he's the son of the son of a plumber, right? Like, of course, he's going to have this match go off without a hitch. Uh, Shaq is dead now, right? Like, they put him through a table. Oh, they yeah. He stuffed him in the ambulance, and never to be seen from again. Wait a minute. And, and I, I got to, so that was, I thought I, I, I hallucinated. He disappeared from the ambulance, right? He just like, poof, gone. I think it was a quick cut, and uh, he undertakered out of the ambulance. So what the hell? He does he possess? It? Did he like? Did, did he escape? Is he driving the ambulance? Like, where the hell is he going? Well, there was a Penta on Instagram posted a picture of him and Shaq, and I was like, I feel like this took place right after the match, <laughs> <laughs> like their little selfie together or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like, he hopped out of the ambulance. He's like, Hey man, it's Penta El Cerro Miedo, and he took a picture with him. That's <laughs> <laughs> loved it. I I gotta tell you, loved it. Uh, they did a very good job. Cody, now this is a good excuse to get him out with an injury. Obviously, he's Absolutely. hurt. So yeah. he worked hurt and he and he put himself through a table. Uh I was I was far more impressed with the match than I thought I would be. It opened mm. the show. The right. it was, you know, so the first 15 minutes, I'll get a nice bump from it. I'm curious how 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 it did. But the purpose I, I 
there was the, the suggestion is that they went on early mm-hmm. to give enough time for media to pick it up in the news that night for the 11 o'clock smart. hour. Smart. So smart, smart, right? So they went on at eight, gives them enough time to have these clips for whatever they ESPN or whatever they're going to use this on to use it on and, and get it organized. So, uh, dude, Shaq, pretty cool. This is, uh, before we move on, I know we're kind of, we, we need to get to the question sooner than later. Uh, I think this is the epitome of what fun pro wrestling can be where, listen, it wasn't the greatest match. It wasn't a technical extravaganza, but it was a spectacle. One of the, it was a spectacle. It was one of the most fun things I've seen on wrestling TV in a very long time. Uh, and they pulled it off. So I think right after this, you had Phoenix and, uh, pack in a squash match against john schuyler and d3 uh cool this was like definitely like you had to cool off the crowd a little bit i guess before the next segment yeah yeah that's exactly what it was uh max caster beating 10 from the dark order uh matt hardy paid uh jack evans like five thousand bucks to interfere or something and then you jump into um the inner circle press conference yes so i they did a good job with this it was really funny uh, they had Rob from Barstool. They had Conrad Thompson, also no- known as Turkey Tits now. Con Con, man. Con Con. Friend Con of the guy, show. Friend of the show. <laughs> uh, Conrad. Uh, I-, I popped to see Conrad, you know, and I looked at Jess. and I'm like, that's my friend. <laughs> that's what I said to her. <laughs> and she looked at me like I'm nuts. She had no idea what I was talking about. Eric Bischoff also there asked a question. Easy. Oh, boy. Uh, the Young Bucks came out to defend their father's honor, and they did a whole uh, thing with them. Well, second table spot of the night with Brandon Cutler, Gallows and Anderson coming out. Uh, you had a double table spot with the Bucks putting uh, Jericho and MJF through a table. Friggin' great. And you know what? As if this is the first 30 minutes of AEW. Yeah. Right? So not only that, but I feel like I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. You had Mother Effin Onita. In a yeah. recorded promo talking about Kenny and Mox in their barbed wire death match. Okay, so that was really cool, right? To see Onita there oh. talking about the death match. We also got glimpses of what the ring is gonna look like. Yeah. Now I don't know if that's the actual setup. So there was a there was a video package while Onita's talking and it's showing, you know, it's mm-hmm. mixing, you know, old Onita matches, death matches that he's yeah. had. Uh, mixing, you know, the ring exploding because there's a majority of people have no idea what to expect with this, right? And right, the people right. that do know what to expect have a very high expectation of what mm-hmm. a death match should be. Now, Absolutely. here's where the trouble is. First of all, they showed some previews of the ring. You know, they got the mm-hmm. ring ropes, you know, with bar wire wrapped around it. I don't know if they're going to put the cage up. I don't know how they're going to make this look. Yeah, I would prefer personally for it to resemble the early on death matches versus what we've seen later on with CZW I and, and other, other death match, you know, organs, even, even the death matches in Japan, it doesn't have the mystique around it. Like the old ones did. The mm. other thing is, I don't know if you can, because think about how gritty those tapes looked. Yes. Right. Like it was, yeah. even if you were in the building, the building was lit dim. It wasn't, there was a, the whole wrestling production. Wasn't this high end thing. You go right. into this. It's like a saw movie. You know, you're watching Onita yeah. and Funk. There's there's bar wire. There's things exploding. There's bats with bar wire. There, there's, uh, t- I mean, it's just a total insane setup that looks like something from a Saw film or a hostile film. And that is going to be very difficult to replicate. I, I, I think that yeah. is that is the biggest problem here. I don't think these guys are going to have a bad match. I think they're going to kill each no. other yes. because they know what's at stake. This is the first time in North America mm-hmm. That you have seen a death match on pay per view or on TV. This is not something, and I'm not even counting. Mm. Forget about CZW. Forget about XPW. Forget about what ECW barely was able to do. This right, right, right. ECW barely did it. They had that Terry Funk Sabu Bar Wire match. Um, you know, it's interesting when you talk about that match because the allure of that match and the and the and the remembrance of that match is far mm. more than the actual match. The match wasn't that great. Absolutely, uh, you know. I think. The magical, the Onita. Uh, if you're gonna, if you guys have no idea what we're talking about, uh, go check out those Anita uh, Onita barbed wire matches on YouTube because they're all available for the most part. Um, there is a certain art to it that you mentioned last week. It's not just a blood and guts free for all. There is actual storytelling involved. Uh, I would yeah. suggest what, like Onita Terry Funk, right? 
Onita Terry Funk is a good one. Um, uh, Hayabusa Onita is another good one. Uh, Mr. Pogo. Mr. Uh, Pogo, Terry, Funk, Terry Funk, another good one. Yeah, the <laughs> so Mr. Good. Pogo ones are good. So uh, I, 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 I really would love... What I was thinking we should have done, but mm-hmm. I had no time with opening the clubs and the restaurants and the fire and everything else. Yeah. I had no time to do, but I would have loved to do uh, a... like us just breaking down two death matches. Sure. Just like telling the story of it because we don't we don't really have uh, like I would love to go down like a story of wings. Like FMW story oh, wings. Yeah. Like Victor Quinones and what an instrumental part he played with FMW and like a lot yeah, of these death sure. match. Like Victor Quinones is a name that nobody ever talks about but he played a tremendous part in pro wrestling in the early 90s late 80s. You know, a lot yeah, of Yeah, for sure. I mean, a little Paul E like too. Uh, he, listen, he managed Leatherface and Freddy Cougar and Crypt the Keeper and Jason, <sighs> Mr. So Pogo, so Gato and Jada. Like, I feel like that was a lot of the allure too for like the the nineties Japanese stuff. Do you know is, what else uh, is a weird yeah, thing, dude? Freaking Leatherface. Yeah, I, go I'm ahead. gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring this up, and I don't know if anybody else has ever noticed this. If you mm-hmm. ever watch late eighties, early nineties Japan, right, mm-hmm. and you're listening to their promos. I do you know that in the promos the Japanese wrestlers will use a very derogatory term towards a Japanese person, right? An abbreviation of the word. Yeah. They use it often in every one of those promos and they call each other that. Different times. Different times. I I, I was like I'm listening to Mr. Pogo cut a promo on I forgot who it was. Onita, maybe, and he yeah. looked at it and called him that. He's like, "You're a blank." You know, I find that a little fascinating because it's all one island, and yeah, I think you get you kind of get a hint of that from every so often on the American commentary for New Japan. Let's say I'm not going to get the cities right, so I'm just making this up. So, like, let's say you're in the Tokyo Dome, and then you go to the Rapungi or something. Osaka, right? Osaka. Osaka. Yeah. The people in Osaka might have a bit of resentment towards Okada because he's not from that town and he's from a different part of the island. You know, so yeah, like that kind of that kind of stuff is very fascinating. Yeah, they bring that up every now and then. I just found it. I, I mean, it was kind of like shocking to hear it, but you also hear like mm-hmm. the American town call them that also. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, what the hell? What what bizarro? I, I got to tell you, 90s futurism Japan is my favorite yeah. aesthetic in the world. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you Listen. know what I mean? This like yeah. weird futuristic 1990s that takes place in Japan. That is absolutely. that is the aesthetic I absolutely love. Absolutely. Like uh, Akira. We're we'll talking like about Akira. Akira again. Yeah. Akira, Akira. And you know what? I know it's not Japan, but L.A. and Blade Runner. Uh, the yeah. original Blade Runner also has that kind of same aesthetic, like that 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 future dystopia almost, yeah. you know, yeah, or Main I Street love. sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Main Street definitely um, has a future dystopia. So they did they did something kind of interesting too, which you know, while we're on the subject of the barbed wire death match, Mox and Kenny did not appear on the show. Uh, you know, the show was really loaded. I don't, mm. but it is weird that your main 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 event, this big time match, did not have Mox or Omega on it. However, I think the explanation was that these guys are really training and they're focused in yes. on, on this match. They, they don't have time to be on TV right now. Very old school style of booking. Uh, okay, so we're juiced up, right? We're, yeah. we're, we got Onita on TV. We're like, holy shit, this is happening. And guess what happens next? The Jurassic most insane Ex- thing. <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> Express versus FTR and Tully Blanchard. I'm going to let you take over for this one. Okay, so I did scream Tully Blanchard about 80 times at my TV, which <laughs> my wife was not very happy because my kids woke up. But mm-hmm. goddamn, Tully Blanchard showed up <laughs> to have a match the first time in 13 years. He had a match in 2007, I believe, oh, the, the last time. However, he has not been on TB- TNT, a Turner station, in about 32 years. Good he has not Lord. had a match on Turner. Uh, he looked great, dude. He no. <laughs> hit a slingshot suplex on Marco Stunt. So By good. the way, JJ F and Dylan ringside. 
So oh my god. They they've set up a new horseman, essentially. So you Straight have up. so Tully came out, had a match. Tully looked good. Listen, he's sixty seven mm-hmm. years old. By the way, not too yeah. far off from Sting. I, I want no. people to Sting Sting is sixty two. Tully's sixty seven. Mm-hmm. Tully was moving, man, for a guy that has not wrestled. He didn't look exhausted. He didn't look like an old man. No. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you, you can kind of see like the way people get up. You could tell actually when when the guys are getting up and they they use their thighs as leverage, you see a lot of like the older guys do yeah. that. He was mm-hmm. looking good, man. Uh, you know that was cool to see Tully in a match. JJ out there. So at the end of the match, there was an attack. Uh, mm-hmm. By the way, they won. But Sean Spears unveiled. You know he was wearing a hood, and now they're so with Sean Spears, JJ Dillon, mm-hmm. FTR, and Tully Blanchard. Arn Anderson comes out oh. down the ramp, and what does he oh. do? He holds the four fingers up. Oh my God! So, I I took the horsemen are I'll back. Be honest with you. <laughs> great, great tribute. By the way, they did come out with the old titles. Yes. Um, I believe Tully was wearing the TV championship, right? The NWA TV title, and I I believe they had the NWA tag titles. Was it the NWA North American tag titles? The US tag titles? What tag titles were that? Because they had like eighty was, of them. I think it was the NWA ones. Dude, freaking was awesome. I, I, I crazy. You know what? It's so simple to do something like that. It's so freaking simple to do that. And it does nothing to harm the product. It just creates a buzz. And I've been saying WWE needs to do this when they do those retro nights, old school raw or attitude era raw. Why wouldn't you put the old titles on these guys? Exactly. You know, um, I think Jericho had an interview earlier either yesterday, maybe during the show or after the show, and he brought up the best point, which is, guess what? AW is using these older guys in the best capacity as opposed to Vince bringing out these older guys and having the crowd make fun of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> WWE brings a guy out. He's dancing to the Tutti Frutti. You know, that that's right. That's really that. That's the way that they book. It's a different type of show, really. Um. I, I very much enjoyed this. I, I really did. I thought it was cool. Uh, I popped for myself. Tully's boots were fire, uh, as Dave D in our chat room said. I, I I think, listen, WWE needs to do this. You know what? How awesome mm-hmm. would it be? They do an old school Raw or SmackDown, whatever they do, and fucking Roman Reigns comes out with that WWE, the, 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 the eagle belt, you know, the double-winged eagle belt. That'd be awesome. Or he comes out with the big one. Or, you know, one of them uses mm-hmm. the world title, an old IC title, old tag titles. Freaking let, let, it, it's fan service, but sometimes it's yeah. necessary. I, 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 it's not a bad thing to do this. It's a positive. You know what it is? And it kind of, it, there's like an odd thing that I feel like it, it just is subli- not subliminal, but like, it's very subtle where like, okay, Tully comes out with that belt, right? Yeah. Um, so maybe like a younger viewer is going to be like, whoa, what, who's this guy? What's that? What's the deal with this? And they're going to go online and look at it. And at some point, more than likely, it may lead back to the WWE network to see older clips of like Tully and Arn yeah. and some horseman stuff, right? Listen, so, I, I want to see more Tully. Same here, dude. Um, I think they, they, that match, fantastic. They did a good job. Um, and right after that, I think you had Paul, Paul White come White. out. Paul White coming out saying with with tears in his eyes saying they're going to unveil a Hall of Fame worthy signing on Sunday. So who so it's not someone that's in the Hall of Fame. It's a Hall of Fame worthy signing and he also said it's not uh, who you think it is. So well, that do, to me meant CM is? Punk. I well I okay. I wasn't thinking anybody until he said it's not who you think it is and the first thing that came to mind was CM Punk. Yeah. Right. Uh, I I agree with that. It's not going to be CM Punk, but again, you never know. Could it be Christian? Um, He's not signed yet. I was thinking three people. Okay. Shoot. Christian. Okay. Because he's not in the hall of fame. So he is hall of fame worthy. RVD. He is hall of fame worthy. Uh, Bubba Dudley. He is in the hall of fame. He's in the hall of fame, but also I believe Devon's sons are. Yes. In a W, right? They are there. Or it could be a female. It could be a female. I don't think it is a female. Um, Mm -hmm. Bubba's interesting. Bubba's very interesting. 
RVD, also uh, interesting. Hall of Fame worthy guy to sign. It has some, but I believe they said two. There's two guys, right? Huh. Okay. Wasn't it two people? Or I, or I'm to- I thought Kurt Angle. The first, honestly, if you were telling me who who, if you're like, oh, Hall of Fame guy, Hall of Fame guy, mm-hmm. yeah, I thought Kurt Angle, but Kurt Angle's in the Hall of Fame, so. It's not going to uh, be Kurt Angle because it's he's not Hall of Fame worthy. He is the Hall. Mm-hmm. He is in the Hall of Fame. So and Bubba's in the Hall of Fame too. It's very fascinating. I feel like the speculation is kind of interesting. It really could be like I feel like there's a million people we're forgetting who had great wrestling runs that aren't on WWE television right now. I, I mean, I'm looking at the chat right now. Mark Henry. Uh, let's see, Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, Sabu, Kane. Uh, Kane is signed. Kane is under contract. Kane won't do anything. Anybody else? Uh, I don't know. Very curious who it is. It's on Hall Shantae. of Fame worthy. It's on Shante. So uh, maybe it's a New Japan guy. What oh if it's God. Okada? What if it's Okada? That's that's what I said. If if it's Okada, I will uh, moon. I will do a standing moonsault through your window. <laughs> yeah. So uh, very, very interesting. So, uh, by the way, Big Show's wearing a shirt. No more BS. Listen, great message. Lita, people are saying Lita. Lita will be Taker. Cool. Trish. <laughs> Taker, Taker Trish is in the Hall of Fame. Foley's Taker in the Hall ridiculous. of Fame. Yeah. Imagine if it was Taker. Imagine if he was like, you know what? F this. Maybe he took Shaq. Oh, boy. Uh, all right. So let me ask you. Yes, sir. Can you remember? a more jam-packed hour of wrestling than what we saw last night. No, no, it was really, you know what? It was like the show they did a couple weeks ago, you know, where mm-hmm. they like packed the freaking show. This was a really, really packed show. Yeah. Uh, every second there was something going on. Uh, curious about the signing. We'll find out on Sunday. Uh, I, I really, the first hour was great. And now we're going into the second hour. We had uh, Mizunami and mm-hmm. Nyla Rose. I thought Nyla was going to take this match. Same here. But really, com- they both look great. I thought this was a good match. I was a little worried about the the matchup because th- they have very different styles, but they worked really hard in this match, and Mizunami uh, defeated Nyla Rose. Uh, I'm pretty excited for the uh, Mizunami and Sheeta match. They had a bit of a they had like a bit of a back and forth with the stiff elbows. Yeah. They yesterday, did a, so- they beat the crap out of each other. So I think the rest of the show was a little bit of a come down. It's not a letdown, but the rest of AEW was definitely a come down from all the excitement from that first hour. It, yeah. The main event know, was an odd pick. Uh it just it shows that they probably flipped the main event, the main event in the <laughs> opening match. Uh yeah. you kind of came down from this point on, but you know, NXT had a far better main event than what we saw in AEW. I'll tell you that. But we we got yeah. after this match, we got a Sting promo Mm-hmm. Uh, Sting got his butt kicked, and uh, Darby made the save. Sting looks good, man. Uh, you know they're doing a good job with this. Yeah, it's fine. Listen, I think I'm looking child. forward to that match. It's like Sting's <laughs> little kid. <laughs> it's like uh, it, I I keep thinking like uh, Darby Allen's like Bart Simpson. It is. It's the Crow and Bart Simpson again. Nineties mm-hmm. all over again, right? Darby Straight Allen night. is the epitome of Bart Simpson wrestling. Uh, but what if that. this is like like a like a, a another sequel to the crow, right? This is the storyline oh in making. Here here's the crow, an old man uh, by now, still trying to fight vigilante. You know, he's a vigilante fighting crime. And here's Darby mm-hmm. Allen, a new undead boy that he's mentoring. Is Sting undead? Have we established that? Well, yeah, I think so. I think he's an undead guy, or is he myster- just mysterious? Because he does does he have has he displayed like spooky powers? Didn't he shoot lightning at one point? <laughs> I, I feel like he yes. did. I, I want to say yes, too. I feel like he's done this. Like that. Like one I, of these. And then lightning bolts start flying out of his hands. I want, Like the Emperor from Star Wars? Yeah, yeah, like this. He's like, they're like, uh, like he, Lex Luger's in the ring, and he just looks at him and goes, <laughs> I Is he like a pagoda? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I want to say... During the Hunter feud, he zapped Hunter with lightning. But I feel like I might be misremembering. That. Dude, no, you missed. You know what it was? It was one of those buzzer handshake tricks. That's what you're remembering. Oh, uh, he got you him. He got like 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 a drunk uncle at Thanksgiving. 
Rich, Speaking come here. Of- let me shake your hand. Hey, I got you. Speaking of like gotcha buzzer tricks, imagine if uh, Sting came out as Joker Sting on Sunday. Would you be upset about that? I'd be into it. I'd be into I'd- it. I'd be into it too. Yeah. It's just so weird. I'm, you know, listen, I'm completely happy with this. Tony Khan has created like this really tight sandbox right it now is a tight of sandbox. like this wrestling planet that this guy's made, and I'm definitely here for it. Um, and I like the battle. Listen, that big brawl at the end that worked. Great go home show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hangman Page and John Silver beat Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn. Huge brawl after the show. All the teams. Uh, at the after the match, all the teams in the battle royal come, came in. Big schmaz, and uh, we'll see you next. End of the show. Big schmaz. Um, do you want to quickly go into what we have left, or do you want to do the questions since we have Let, about twenty minutes? Left? Let's go quickly into Revolution uh, predictions, really quickly. Great. We'll do our cool. AW predictions, and then we'll do our Q and A. So make sure you post them in the notes. So. AEW Revolution this Sunday will be live on the Wrestling Observer website and, of course, on F4W Online's YouTube account. Uh, you could head on over there and, uh, and and subscribe, obviously, but you could join us at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. The show begins at 8 p.m. Pre-show at 7 p.m. We'll be live at 6.30, so a lot of big announcements, a lot of big stuff. So, Rich, let's go down this card and do a quick prediction. All right, sounds good. So you have the money match. Uh, wait, I'm sorry, I missed something here. Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor versus Miro and Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford. I think uh, Miro needs the win. You know, like I said, I feel like this dude's better yeah. off on. He, I, from my perspective as a fan, I'm like this dude would have been better off on Impact. But I'm glad he's an AW because he has familiar faces there that could help him. I think he also has to kind of get in the swing of things a little bit with different people. Yeah. You know, they're, they're holding off on him. They have they have plans for Miro for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, who do you think takes it? Uh, I would go with Miro and uh, and Kip to take this. Cool. Uh, yeah, the money match with uh, Matt Hardy versus Hangman. The winner receives the opponent's 2021 uh, first quarter earnings. Uh, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go Hangman. I'm gonna go Hangman too, and you're gonna see Matt Hardy, you know, throw a fit at the end. Or you're mm. going to find out he really doesn't have any money. Great. He doesn't great make as much of- money as 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 they think. And Hangman actually makes more money than him. So oh, he looks dude. at his check. He'll like look at the check and be like, that's all you're getting paid. And he'll hand it back to him. Dude, you nailed it. That That's the finish I want. You nailed it. Why? Because Hangman, this is going to probably play out on like Wednesday or whatever. But you can easily see him going, hey, Hangman, I got to tell you something. Not only was I broken, Matt Hardy, I'm broke, Matt Hardy. I'm broke, and Matt that's, Hardy. <laughs> that's going to be the story going into. Uh, listen, All broke, right. Matt Hardy, fantastic. Good job, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> Casino Tag Team Royal, uh, Bear Country, Alex Reynolds and John Silver, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, Santana and Ortiz, Butcher and the Blade, Private Party, and Top Flight. It's going to be fun. The winning team receives a future tag team title match. I'm going to go Santana and Ortiz, but. Yeah. Only because MJF and Jericho should win the tag titles, and you're going to create even more of an issue amongst the inner circle. I'll agree with that 100%. Um, you have the face of the revolution ladder match Cody versus Penta versus Scorpio Sky versus Lance Archer versus Max Caster versus Turnbuckle Dan. Turnbuckle uh, Andy. Turnbuckle Andy. This is going to be where I think the signing shows up, right? Because it's either going to be the same person or another person. Uh, I don't know. I that that's the thing. So the winner of this will receive a future AEW TNT Championship match. Mm. You may have two openings because Cody may not wrestle in this. True. Right. So I don't know who you put in this. I, I I'm gonna. I I don't even want to guess on who Shaq. the TBA is. <laughs> who who do you think? Shaq. Shaq. Uh, me, I don't know. Let me climb that ladder. Give you a shakaroni. <laughs> I uh, wanted to do a shakaroni. <laughs> he's just throwing shakaronis out into the crowd. Yeah, calling the general, whatever other products that he hawks. Um, you also have the street fight between Sting, Darby Allen versus Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Um, Sting and Darby have to win this, right? Sting and yeah, hundred percent. Sting and Darby need to win this. But is this this is not going to be live, right? This is a uh cinematic match i don't know 
Uh, I think it's going to be, I feel like they should do a cinematic match, which would be kind of cool. You know, I feel yeah. like they can film it very well. Um, AW World Tag Team Championship match, the Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and MJF. Um, Bucks retain, right? I'm going to go Jericho and MJF. Oh, I would yeah. like to see Jericho and MJF. The The odds are that the Bucks retain, but if my Santana and, or, uh, Santana and Ortiz winning the, the Battle Royal works, then it should be Chris Jericho and MJF. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Hikaru Shida versus Ryo Mizunami for the um, AW Women's World Championship. You know, I think Shida retains again, but it's going to be like a really hard fought match. <sighs> yeah, Shida will retain. I'm going to go with Shida retaining. I'm surprised it's Mizunami and Shida. Very surprised by that. I think it's not it's, that I'm against it. I'm into it. Yeah. I think it's cool. It's cool because you're going to have like a very like Japanese style match with them. Uh, it's going to add to the show. And finally, you have the AW World uh, Championship match, exploding barbed wire death match between Kenny Omega with Don Callis and John Moxley. Uh, Kenny retains, in my opinion. Kenny retains with a blue uh, with a bluet club, a, a, a bullet club reunion. Blue I'm going to go with that. A bluet club. <laughs> you know what? If they don't do this, then they did. Mm. It is the bluet club because they blew it. <laughs> Uh, that's good. That's uh, a Kenta probably. Player. That is uh, Kenta probably. I, I would the way I would do this. Kenta interferes. Other Bullet mm. Club members interfere. Becomes a whole thing. Uh, now you've set up another John Moxley Kenta match to take place for the sure. U.S. title, but this time on AEW TV. I'll agree with that. I also think Moxley is going to take some time off for uh, the baby. The baby, yeah, because she's she's due. I don't know when soon. Soonish, right? So Soon-ish. why not? I also feel like Kenny. Is gonna. This might just be like my fandom, but I do feel like they're gonna explode that Hayabusa scale of blood. Okay, if they do, very happy. I and and we'll talk about this uh, mm. when we're on our. Are we doing a preview this weekend? You want to do it before the show? You want to do it on Sunday? I was thinking do it Saturday for Sunday. Uh, let me get back to you on that. Get back to me. No, I know. You know it's no, no, Saturday. I can't. Sorry. Okay. All right. So we won't do it. But either way. Um, they got to they got to live up to the expectation of what it could be. They can't screw this up. Uh, mm-hmm. so I I I know that they they know that this bar is set. It's there's no, they have to do a great job. They they there's no excuse. They can't, and it has to look good aesthetically. That's what that's the biggest yeah. thing here. Uh, I think but it's this kind of yeah, this kind of goes into the other thing we were talking about the U.S. title match with Kenta. John Moxley retained last Friday. Had a match with Kenta. Mm-hmm. Empty building. Uh, for New Japan for the IWGP US title, John Moxley won. Uh, a lot of people thought Kenta would win this, but it was a very hard hitting match. Quick, too. Uh, quick, yeah. It was, it was, it was fine. It was good. I, I didn't love it as much as some other people loved it. Mm. Some people loved this match. It was good. It was a good match. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> uh, loved New it. Japan <laughs> is also unifying the IWGP Heavyweight Title and the Intercontinental Title. To create a new belt that will be recognized as the World Heavyweight Championship. Kento will awesome. be recognized as the first ever IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. So now, uh, I've always I've always looked at the IWGP title as a world title. But now mm-hmm. they're calling it a world title because it's obviously going to be defended in other places. This will, uh, you know, the question is, what does this mean to the lineage of the IWGP title? I think this continues the heavyweight title lineage. But the IC title is no more. I'm okay with that, you know, especially since they have that U.S. title, which I feel like is more beneficial to the company. Yeah, the the U.S. title is kind of taking the place of that, but also probably going to come back the mm-hmm. IC title. And there's a lot of titles. You have your your six man title, your tag title, your uh, junior, your junior mm-hmm. tag, never your open. heavyweight tag, your never, you know. And I think you have your trios, right? Yeah. So you got a lot of belts there. Yeah, it's okay if they lose one belt. That's yeah, that's fine. perfectly fine. You want to do questions? Let's do questions, boys and girls. Submit them in the chat room. We're going to do our best to answer them as quickly as possible. We have a bunch of questions. Rich, what are the questions? Uh, quick shout out to Mr. Gonzo. I hope you're happy. Look at this. Look how tight we did this. We did do this tight. So tight. Uh, so we got a few more minutes here, and we're going to go through them. Uh, Andretti on Twitter asks, do you think Jade's debut should have been in a singles match instead of debuting in a tag match with Shaq? Maybe she got out shined. Uh, you I- know what? Where, where, where do you go? Great debut, dude. Great, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, I would. I think it worked. I, I get the conversation to have. Like, do you want to profile her individually? I think the fact that she got so much, she would not have been in a match like this. Mm. I'll tell you that. Uh, and right. they probably practiced this to no extent. I mean, I mean, really mm. took time with this to to kind of get everything going. Very good showing for both her and Red Velvet. Oh, a hundred percent, man. Like they're, they're both going to be on top of that women's division in the next couple of years. I think Jade, like we've been saying something super special about her, uh, very, very impactful debut in a gimmicky match, which I feel like is very hard to pull off. Yeah. Uh, the fifth generation Carney asks, do you guys think impact will move to Thursdays? Uh, why not? Right. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I, by the way, I, I predicted, and and let me let me just touch on this because I didn't mention this during the show. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have been asking, like, well, what are the ratings going to be now that these shows are on two separate nights? I'm not. I don't think you're going to see like a tremendous swing in the ratings. Like, don't think mm -hmm. AEW is going to have another six hundred thousand people watching every week. You got to remember, a right, lot of right. these viewers they're back and forth viewers. A lot of them won't mm -hmm. watch AEW. A lot of them won't watch NXT. You know, it, it, these. They're going to get a bump for sure. It's just a matter of how much. I don't know. I think AEW will get a better 50-plus viewership. Okay. Now that now that you know NXT is not on, that'll get bumped a little bit. If you see another two to 300,000 viewers, that's that's tremendous. You yeah. know? And the same goes for NXT. The same will go for them. If they're in the 750 to 900 range, that's where they're going to be. I, I, I think a lot yeah. of people are expecting these numbers to be blockbuster numbers. Get that out of your head. Uh, it, it's it, yeah, it's yeah. not, you know, a lot of the viewership is shared. The other thing that I found out was, you know, we, did, we talk about the viewers were only, you know, people like 2 million people watch SmackDown or a million, million eight watch Raw. Those are total viewers, right? We're not talking mm -hmm. about the people that just watch for like five minutes or six minutes. Right. You know what I mean? You got to, if you add those people, like SmackDown gets like 8 million people some nights that watch at yeah. some point concurrent, you know, like at one point they're watching. I don't know what the AEW numbers are, and I don't know what the NXT numbers are for that. I know that AEW with the DVR numbers is about a million, two, million, three, million, mm -hmm. four, maybe. Uh, but WWE gets about like let, let's go, let's go a little lower. Six million eyeballs on a Friday night. Okay. I just wanted to add that. Uh, are we ready for the next one? Yes. Uh, <laughs> when you talk numbers, I uh, I go to uh, Bobby works. Lashley's. <laughs> I go to Bobby Lashley's Rock Planet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's no offense to you. I'm just not a numbers guy. So whenever I hear any number over ten, I'm like, Ugh. it's too much. It's too much for me. Uh, Bob Rowe asks, when WWE goes to Peacock, are pay per view events included, like WrestleMania, or are they cost plus? Uh, no, the pay-per-views are going to be included in the Peacock deal. The big problem here is the migration. Uh, a lot of speculation that there is no migration to do. So I, I the way they should have done this was have the network app run for, let's say, six months or eight months, the WWE network app, where everything is still there. And on the side, there's a little thing that says Peacock. And if you click on that, it takes you to the Peacock portal. And if you run it on the Peacock app, there's a WWE thing that takes you right to the WWE portal. So I don't know how they're doing this exactly. I've asked. I've heard 10,000 different ways that they're going to migrate. I, I don't think this is going to be a smooth, super smooth transition. I'll just put that there. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a lot of questions today, guys, so be patient. If we don't get to it, try again next week. Uh, John Gorman asks, realistic... Bleh. I can't speak English. Realistically speaking, how do you think, who do you think will be, listen, guys, if you're going to ask questions, please use proper spelling. And <laughs> John, realistically speaking, how do you, who do you think will be the mystery? Jesus Christ. Realistically speaking, who do you think will be the mystery signing to AEW? And who do you think will be the seventh entrant in the ladder match? Oh, we, we, we just discussed we that. Just that. I, Frig I, I RVD, don't dude. know. <laughs> uh, go with RVD. I, I, I don't know. I, and I and I like the surprise element here. I mean, it has to be someone big if they're promoting it, right? If they're saying a yeah. future Hall of Famer. I mean, Christian could be, but is Christian a big pop? You know, I don't I don't know. Surprise. Surprise. I also don't want to see Christian there because I think there's a lot to do with Edge when he should, you know, when he wins a title, if he wins a title. There's still something Absolutely. there. 
Rhino. You want him at WrestleMania. Don't you want Christian at WrestleMania? Why wouldn't you lock him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Batcher 3000 asks, who is a good one? Who would you like to be the fourth member of the new horseman? Uh, Miro. Really? Yeah. I'm going to go hangman. Hangman? Okay. Hangman? Cool. <laughs> so hangman? I'm so surprised. Oh, hangman. oh puppies. Uh, I turned oh, to, boy. I turned to, to, to the king. No, I don't want to be on your podcast. Uh, Jeff Samuel asks, I know you won't like this. Oh boy. But how do you feel about Penta and Phoenix getting a manager like a Chavo or Shaq? Who would you like to see manage them? I would like to. Uh, Chavo, I'm cool with. That's fine. Cool with I don't want to see Shaquille O'Neal managing anybody because uh, he's so gigantic. He's going to make them, these guys look so puny. But how great. How great would that be, though? He's like, come Kamari, on my shoulders. Come on, Ray Phoenix. Penta El Cerro Miedo. He's doing this shit like backstage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I think they nailed it already when Kingston was their s- mouthpiece. Yeah. But Chavo would be great. Yeah, I- I'm loving your shack, by the way. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. John Gorman, <laughs> do you think WWE might pivot real quick and do Lashley versus Lesnar? At WrestleMania in the big, the big double L match. The, the big double. Listen, that match has to happen. I don't know if that's going to be the match at WrestleMania because Drew still needs to do something. But we got a pay per view before WrestleMania, so I, I have no idea where this is headed. All right, let's see here. Um, do you let wrestlers? Okay, do you let wrestlers' political beliefs make you like them less or more? Example, the Young Bucks being birthers or Chris Jericho sending his wife and mother-in-law to the Capitol riots? I listen, oh, Jericho boy. didn't send anybody it's, anywhere, right? It's also but not the show for this, but <laughs> I don't I really I really don't care where people fall politically. I, I don't I don't hold any I, I'm not one of these people that tells you F you if you you have a different political belief yeah, than yeah. I do. I, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> everybody's different. Everybody has different upbringings. Everybody has a different answer to the same question. So uh, I, I would never hold somebody's political beliefs against against them unless they're, you know, uh, just crappy human beings. I, I don't exactly. Think, I don't hold what Jericho posts or the Young Bucks or anybody else. Or even you, if you're, you're left leaning, I don't hold that against you. If you have some radical belief. A hundred percent. Like you could be you can think whatever you want. If, if you want to be misinformed with either political leaning, that's fine. But if you're a misinformed asshole, I think that's when it becomes toxic. And you know that's what? It. You know what? That's you're right. It. That's yeah. it. You know how many you don't people wanna... I know? Like family events, dude. You know, like mm. someone's like, oh, did you read? You know, once I hear that, I'm like, eh, you know, like I'll politely be like, actually, it wasn't that way. It was like this. You know, like right now here in New York, everybody's losing a mind over Cuomo. So I'm like, ugh, I just check out at this point. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to ever. I don't want to see. I I don't want to see anything with politics anymore. I, I'm, yeah, same I'm, here. I'm out. Did you hear? Um. Also, guys, breaking news. I'm a flat earther. I knew it. <laughs> I that's knew it. Get, that's when you get a. Uh, that's when you get like a really amazing pizza that's covered in blue and green dye. You know what? Is that how you is that how you get to Bobby Lashley's planet? You got to break that ice barrier and then you just go over to the rock planet. It's like a map in World of Warcraft. Oh, my God. It's like uh, Bobby Lashley's ice planet. I think I think the the flat earth earthers think Earth is like Asgard from the first Thor movie where it just hovers in space. Yes. Yeah, that's that is what they believe. And the water goes nowhere. Uh, yeah. Listen, shout out to all my flat earthers out there. <laughs> yeah. Which are ridiculousness. Love it. Uh, with. I think that question would have been better if uh, it was, do you think, would you have a different opinion on wrestlers if they were flat earth? <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, actually, that I would. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with a, uh, this is from transferring heat podcast with AEW recreating nitro and hiring the over fifties hall of fame. Worthy guy has to be Scott Steiner. And will this new Sean Spears gimmick find this is like eight questions in one, dude. Will this new Sean Spears <laughs> get let's just do them really quick. Okay. Uh is it Scott Steiner? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be Scott Steiner either. Uh will Sean Spears' new gimmick finally work? Uh sure. Maybe. Uh is William Regal's big announcement next week that NXT is opening the forbidden door for Raw and SmackDown? Maybe. Mm, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh let's see. 
Where do we go? Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Johnzo, the Habibi Playboy. Um, did Ciampa and Gargano refuse to leave NXT cause a knee-jerk reaction to calling up talent to the main roster? Uh, well, what happened was Ciampa got injured. Yeah, they, okay. they were both called up, but when he got injured, they had nothing for Gargano because they were going to be a tag team coming up you know, on the main roster for a little bit. That fell apart, so they just went back to square one. Okay. Uh, let's see. From uh, Maj Raju, do you think... I hope I pronounced that right. Do you think SmackDown got plans for Aleister Black? Because if WWE built him good, you can get Roman, Roman versus Aleister. They screwed this guy up badly with the eye gimmick. Um, I don't know what the plans for him are. I really, I really don't know what it is uh from hothead uh five six seven when does aew leave daily's place so a lot of speculation when because if you went to the aew website or like their ticket website you could see that there are tickets for sale for mm. philadelphia in april um i what i believe those are are the tickets that they had for sale last year Mm -hmm. that they have to still honor at one point. So I, I, I think it's just like a Ticketmaster thing where they got to like have those tickets available just in case. And then when the date, when it gets closer to the date, they're just going to bump it to another one. The only event right now that I've heard is official is that possibly Chicago in September. And of course the, uh, that Rochester show that they're going to do, I'm sorry, no, cool. the, the Jersey show that they're going to have to make up. I'm going to pitch you an idea. So when they leave Daly's place, they're going to go to Diamond Dallas's house uh, and call it Dally's Place. Dally's Place. That's what they're they going to do. They're just going to wrestle in all the rooms in his mansion. <laughs> I like that, actually. Uh, last question of the day. Yes, sir. From our friend Tim Anger. Yes. Big shout out to Tim Anger. What is the future for Undisputed Era? And will any of them ever be called up to the main roster? I think the future's over for them. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I you know maybe they'll do a return back but I think this is the beginning of the, of the split for them, you know, utilize them in different positions. Uh I I think they you know did it run its course? Yeah, I think a little bit. You know, not having an audience there definitely was time to do something with them, but listen, when they do have a reunion with a live audience, how tremendous is that going to be? Dude, I'm telling you, they're going to milk it like the shield. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I had a dream the other night that I was in the shield, except it was me, Roman, Seth, and Dean Ambrose. Okay. Like legit, legitimate mercenaries. Oh, okay. You were like legitimate going out like, there to find people. Like A-team style, like, oh, like in the that. jungles. And it was a pretty rad dream. And I woke up and I was like, oh, I watch a lot of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's it for this week. If you're watching this live, hey, I'll be on Wrestling Observer Live today at 3 o'clock, 3.30, something yeah, like that. Uh, I'll be on then. We will be back this Sunday with our watch along starting 6.30 p.m. East, exclusively on the F4W YouTube page. Of course, WrestlingObserver.com. You can get all the information over there. A uh, lot to talk about this weekend. We'll have a lot of fun, get some drinks. Our buddy Kyle is going to be joining us because he's been in death matches. He's been in hardcore matches. Yeah. So who better to have here kind of break down what we're seeing than a guy that's already been in these type of matches. So he'll be joining us on Sunday. Doing a lot of giveaways. We'll have a lot of fun. Uh, you can follow Rich. BTC Rich. Rich has been doing a podcast. The Return of Behind the Counter 2.0. Rich, where can people find it? Uh, you can find me at BTC Rich on Twitter. And you can find the podcast on YouTube at BTC Rich X. Uh, please subscribe to it. I do a different er interview with... I do an interview with a different creator every week. Uh, so I kind of want to hit 100. Uh, and just let's see where it goes, man. If you guys like comic books, come check it out. Awesome. 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 Guys, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow Matt Men Podcasts everywhere. Podcasts are available. Your favorite podcasting apps here on YouTube, of course. And you can follow our social pages. Just look up Matt Men Podcasts wherever you are. And you'll find us. TikTok is Matt Men Pro Wrestling. And we'll see you all on Sunday. Take care.